Right guys, Tuesday morning, um, you might have seen on the last video we mentioned some kits. Well I've been and picked them up from the laser cutters this morning and they're laid out here in front of me. So basically what these are, is if you decide you want to fabricate a shell similar to the one that's behind me, these are all the panels or bits of plate and things that you'll need to do. So where the front grills are in the, in the foot wells, these laser cut plates, they're basically weld over each part of the grill so what this does is instead of putting like a big plate in there we've gone down the same route as what they did with the Eggenberger cars of each individual plate and we think it looks a lot nicer so basically what you've got here is you've got all the the bits for the grommets in the floor so these basically cover all the little grommet holes in the floor you take the grommets out and you weld all these in so you get a full set of them again you get all the plate little individual plates and I'll show you where they go to cover the grills in the floor that no one seems to quite understand what they're there for um, you get a plate for where the handbrake is so you drill a spot welds out around the handbrake and you push the inners through and then that plate goes over and all these i mean how long is it going to take you to cut all these you're probably spending at least a full day with an angle grinder you know two of them two of them two of them two of them there's about 30 piece individual pieces here um, not to mention the cost of buying the plate and everything as well because these are all 1.2 mil these are 3 mil these bits are 2 mil so it's not all just the same size plate we've specced each one out of a particular material spec so you've got if you're going down the, the matter roll cage again which is what we use these are your gussets these are your rear um, roll cage mounts these actually come flat and what we do is we put these in here so that each time you bend it, it bends exactly where it needs to bend each time. And then all you do is you just weld these back up again. It serves, you don't need a folder for it. All you, you can, oh, well, I bent these up this morning by hand. Because you are so strong, <laughs> Steve. <That's laughs> it. So we've got them. We've got these anti-roll bar mounts for the front. So if you are using the Group A roll bar, Paul, probably best off mentioning that one to you now. Grab that then, Steve. I'll show them what these are for. Even though I've got my bandage on my head, look. <laughs> um, basically, uh, these replace the original captive nuts that go in the chassis wheels on a standard Sierra. As everybody will tell you, they know the captive nuts snap off real, real easy. And the, the, the area needs reinforcing anyway. So what you do on the Group A cars is we remove the original captive nut, which basically simply whack it with an hammer and it drops off. We weld two captive nuts onto the back of these and then we use this which we've got as a, as a mock-up if you like so we we put the captive nuts on we sit that on we bolt it together and then we sit that up to the chassis bolt it in place and basically weld around them plates and that makes sure you get that plate in absolutely exactly the right place now people will say well that's all right for you because you've got a mock-up well obviously if you're going to go down the group here um route you need these anyway so what we would suggest is you buy these first buy the anti-roll bar kit which we can supply if you want or you can try and get it from some other unreputable companies <laughs> but we can supply it for you and then you can use it to mock it up so that's that done but that is a critical part we've done that with three mil that steve in it yeah, has mil, that, correctly yeah. um seam weld the captive nuts on not just tack like they are on the on the original ones and you'll never have an issue with that again and you reinforced it so that's that idea. People look back through our videos and see us fitting that to the Eggenberger shell. That's right, yeah, we did. We showed it was doing yeah, it, didn't we? see exactly how we did that. Right, I'll pass you back to Steve and he'll show you how the rest of it goes. Yeah, so as mentioned, we've got all the shell bits there. These are bits for the roll cage. So again, this is for the matter spec cage, which we will be able to supply. So instead of having to go to anywhere else, you can just come to us, buy a cage off the shelf with all the correct gussets and everything along with all these other fabrication parts and start building your own group here sierra that brings me on to these bits again which you'll have seen me using on the eggenberger shell so we've got that's the bulkhead plate so you cut out where the original brake servo goes and you mount that into the bulkhead itself do you want to show them steve to make it easier yeah if we show them there <clears throat> so that basically mounts on there so you cut out everything behind it and then you shape this trim it to fit or whatever you need to do with it and then that fits into there like that line it up i think it's down there somewhere 
that goes in there and then you've got this plate here which again has got all the soft folds in it so you can fold this up on a bench and it'll fold in exactly the right places you won't have to mess about with a foot specific folder and basically them two bits are line up and then your cylinders go through so this one here you cut the front off your pedal box off the standard pedal box and then that gets welded onto the original pedal box and then that basically converts it along with this fact, piece tell you what steve we've got one haven't we do you want to grab it there's one just in there or shall i grab it yeah Hand you a second. grab it so then that bolts on along with so that bolts on along with this and that gives you a group a pedal box that'll allow you to fit a front and rear master cylinder and do away with the brake server so there's paul's just brought one in now but that's one that i built previously so that you fold basically you fold all that up that falls like that and then like that and then them edges fold round to weld on so we've made it idiot proof yeah you can't really go wrong um which is a good thinking, job in case i do one <laughs> <laughs> anyone thinking oh well how do i know it's going to fold in the right place because we've put the slots in there it, every time you fold that it'll fold perfectly square and then all you do is you just go along and you weld it up and what what you what we suggest you do is obviously just cut the front off um and then bolt that in place put that in place onto your bulkhead so you know you've got the angle correct that's how you did it Steve. Yeah, one two and then once you've got the angle right, you can tack it in place, take the pedal box back out because it bolts in there. So it's easy enough to bolt up. And then you can seam weld it as Steve's done with that one. And then once you've got that, that then becomes your perfect template on where to put that. Yep. So complete idiot proof. Yeah, I mean, obviously with all these parts, we'll also have full instructions that come with it showing where everything goes, which plates fit where in the floor and all the rest of it. But... It is pretty self-explanatory. They are all cut to fit in specific certain areas. So I'll just show you now if Paul grabs. I'll tell you, we'll just talk about that first because we, we will supply you with that, with the pedal box kit. That's the um, adjusting bar for the vice pedal box, but it comes with a bush. Now that bush, we'll show you when we've done that pedal box at a later day, that bush needs welding into the actual brake pedal because that sits inside there. So that's part of the kit that you'll get as well. So if Paul just grabs this off me, I'll just show you an example of where bits fit in the floor. So this one here, you can see obviously there's a recess in the floor that fits in there perfectly in there. You can either seam weld it all the way around or you can tack it and then seam sealer it. But it just saves messing around, cutting bits of plate and it not being square and it just looks it looks nice really. And then you've got this one here, again, just fits perfectly. It wants slightly bending slightly and then that will fit perfectly in the floor there. And then if I pick up some of these for the front. I'll just grab that while we're here to show them where this goes. This is the one Steve spoke about earlier. These obviously, we're going to actually modify these slightly because they go in there for the cage to sit on, the cage welds to there. But obviously it'll need trimming because that back edge will need trimming off. So what we're actually going to do, thinking about it, we're going to make this one fit perfectly. Then we're going to flatten it back out and get them laser cut so that once you've folded them, they'll just drop into place and you can weld them in. We'll go around the other side. So we've got, if I picked up right one, that one there is for where the heater matrix normally is. So that would get welded on either the inside or the outside. This one's already been done by someone else. So we don't need that one on here. And then we've got all these, instead of putting a big plate on it, we've got all these little plates here, which just happen to fit where they all need to go. Oh, fucking you need more fingers, Steve. Oh, yeah. I think I picked wrong one up there, but there's a small one that goes up there as well. One that fits, that one fits onto there, and then there's another one on there. But we just think that looks a lot nicer and a lot tardier than trying to cut them all by hand out of various bits of bits of plate, and it just saves so much time. So anybody who's thinking about building one of these shells, I would say if you look at investing in one of these, there's a plate to go there. I'll just grab that so people can see. 
That's the bit that dri drilled the spot wells out and dropped that handbrake plate out of the bottom, so it just drops out once you've drilled spilled, um, drilled out the spot wells. And then we have a plate made. Goes across here. Just welds across there. So that's basically the start of the fabrication kit, and then on top of that, we've also got the air jack kits as well, which is again you can buy it with this or you can buy it separate. We're trying to make it so you can buy as much or as little as you want, really. But that'll be the air jack kits, and it'll come with all the brackets and everything that you need. The correct lengths of tube, um, basically to weld in the fronts and the rear air jacks. A little bit of dimensions of where to cut and all the rest of it. So really, we can't make it any more simple. No, I think we've just saved people an absolute boatload of time, haven't we? Yeah. But one other thing we're going to do is uh, to remove the blower box. Obviously, as most people will see, there's a big blower box sits under there. And we don't want that on a race car. So we're going to fabricate. We'll show you when we've done it, but a, a, a way of the, the blower motor that sits under there will push air into a tube system that we're going to fabricate to push air up to demist your windscreen to, without having to run the huge great big blower box so and i think there's obviously the group here column mount as well which will come as part of the kit you can add into it or take it off if you don't want to use that yeah and we've just found another one today we're going to laser cut a little plate that goes into the fuse box there so that's going to be part of the kit as well so we're, we're adding to it all the time but as Steve says, you can buy as little or as much as you want of the kit. You can buy a complete kit or you can buy a floor kit, whatever you want. So we'll get that on the website pretty soon. And uh, there you go. How easy do you want it? <laughs> right, guys, end of another day, more or less. So we thought we'd just give you a quick look at what we've done. So you'll have seen earlier, I mentioned about these plates and this kit. So I've been welding these in today, give you a little look as to how they are when they're in. So as you can see, we just spot them in and then before I paint it, it'll get a nice little bit of sealer ran in round there. And again, here, well, it saves so much time that I haven't got to spend marking out every individual piece and cutting it and shaping it. It just, you just clean the paint off, drop it on the oil, tack it on. And obviously if you're attempting to build one of these cars yourself, someone's going to send you a kit with all the paperwork that tells you what to weld and where, it makes the job a lot easier. The Idiot's Guide to Group <laughs> <of> Sierras. <laughs> Excuse me. So, climb in here. So this is what we were saying about individual pieces, and we just think it looks a lot nicer. When this is got sealed up and it's painted, you've still got some shape. Instead of just a big uh, square plate that's just riveted on, and this is obviously how the Eggenberger cars were done. So if it's good enough for them, it's good enough for us. This is where the handbrake was. Again, we showed you the plate and I've welded that in. Cleaned up around it and welded it in. And then I've also got one of the air jacks installed as well. So again, another kit that you'll be able to buy. It'd be all the four air jack tubes with all the brackets and the dimensions of where to put it and how to do it. But Just get a close-up of his croak shit welding for you. <laughs> <laughs> so complimentary. <laughs> I do my best. I don't want I don't want to give him too many compliments. I want a pair of eyes. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we're uh, pretty happy with how it's coming on. Yeah, a couple of there, isn't it? Is, yeah. And I've actually started doing some work today. I've been working on the Mark II Iris 2000 that we spoke about. I've been ticking off bits and pieces on the list so slowly starting to work through that just silly little things on this car really like the back seat wasn't bolted in the interior light was knackered and didn't work so we've got a, a second hand one of them off graham at gs classics so he sent us some bits we've got a new windscreen on the way that should be a tomorrow um because it's got the wrong type of windscreen in it and Mark or cracked somewhere. I can't remember what was on with it. Anyway, it's down for a new screen. So I'm slowly working my way through this. So that's it. What day are we? Tuesday. Tuesday. So got, Tuesday. Royal Cage Steel coming tomorrow as well. Yeah. yeah. That's another delivery of bits to uh, progress. Lovely. That's it then. We'll come back to you in the morning and uh, let you know where we're at.
Right guys, it's uh, Saturday, we're here at Bangers and Cash Live, I'm sure you'll be able to hear Derek in the background doing his auction tour, uh, we've been asked to bring a few cars along, so we've brought the Sierra that you'll have seen on earlier videos that Steve's put in the cage into now, we brought one of the cars that I built years ago, the original, um, well, the original Caltex car, I say, my original Caltex car, obviously not the original car, and a 500 road car. So we're here with Steve, just meeting and greeting and saying hello to a few people. Signing some autographs, that type of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> More popular than the bangers and cash boys, were you? So, um, have a look around, yeah, have a look. You'll see uh, that we, Steve's got the back half of the cage in, well, tacked in, so that's uh, where he's got to, he'll tell you where we are. So yeah, you'll have seen me earlier on in the week, oh, start of the week, Tuesday, Wednesday, when I started bit talking to you about the kits and stuff like that, in and after the video, so that's all in now, got all the plates and everything in, we've temporarily put a dashboard in just so it fills the front half of the car. Rear half of the cage is in, it's not quite finished, but it's as far as we got before we had to prep the car to come here. Roll cage gussets are in on each side, and if you can see them, maybe if you come around this way, you might be able to. So they're both in, then we gave it a quick clean up. So, next stage for this really is for me to start making the front half of the cage. There's a couple of extra tubes that I haven't fitted yet or haven't made yet, they'll go in, and then what I'll do from that point then is we'll take the whole cage back out again. We'll then prep the feet, ready to install it properly from scratch. There's the holes to put in the sills and then basically the front half of the cage drops in to allow me to weld around all the tops. So that's where we'll be at for me next week. Um, Paul will probably be on with the orange Escort still, I think. Down. Well, when I finish the Moonstone 500 with the engine bare loom, that'll be done midweekish time, then back on to RS2000. So whilst we've got the opportunity, you may as well tell us about the car. Well, you built a few yeah. years ago. Right then, some of you'll probably remember this car. Um, originally, I built this in 2010 as a, as a fast road track car, really. Um, it's evolved over years. I sold it, bought it back, and then converted this car to a full blown Group A car. With the intention of racing this with Carl Jones. Um, but unfortunately, well, not unfortunately, but then I got offered the chance to buy Carl's Duckham's car, so I sold this on to buy that car. So we'll have a really quick look round it. This now is a, as we say, a full Group A spec car. Proper genuine 500 engine in it, get track gearbox, 9 inch diff, blah, blah, blah. It's got everything in it that a proper, proper Group A car should have. Owned by a good friend of mine now. He bought it off me and he intends on racing the car, hopefully next year at some point. Get out and about in it. It's a bit wet, it's been raining a bit today, hasn't it? So, got a bit soggy. I'll show you inside it. So what's basic spec on this engine then, Paul? Well, this is a proper full-blown Group A spec engine. Um, just recently been fully rebuilt by uh, RV Gibbs at SCS Motorsports. So that's had a full engine rebuild, it put on a new engine loom and a life racing ECU so it's got the latest spec we'll have a quick look inside it chassis one as well eh? yeah number one I'm gonna bring it round Steve lovely car shame I sold it really but so this is not one of our cages, is it? This is one that you bought in. Yeah, we bought this cage in and then fitted it ourselves. And how original is this dashboard to the genuine car then? Well, I, I would have said probably nothing like in reality. All I went for was just the delivery rather than trying to replicate the car exactly. So that really was the start of how I designed the dashes that all our cars are done to now, exactly the same, same layout, the same amount of gauges, the same location. Um, so they're all done exactly the same as this now. So you have these on the shelf, don't you? The looms, we carry these in stock now. All Raycom looms, all trip switches, everything to do just a plug and play. So it makes life a lot easier. And yeah, obviously... Yeah. The looms come in different sections with correct motorsport connectors on them. So if you've got a fault on a loom or a damage a loom, you can just replace 
each section at a time. It so makes life easier. Them covers that you've got over the fuel lines, are they similar to what's on the Rouse cars? Very similar, yeah. I like that design. I pinched that from Rouse, so we make them in-house now. We made them to fit the two, there's two fuel lines feeding the engine there and one return. So we made them up. We've got one on this side as well for all the actual loom on the car. Finishes so it off nicely, that. Yeah, just a nice little touch, a separate thing. Our own floor plates that we made there. Again, to our own design, proper bias pedal box in it. Well, look round the back. Yeah, unfortunately, we can't really see in the back, as in the the cover, the cover's screwed on, but obviously all the fuel tank, yep. fuel pumps, and well, the fuel pumps and everything are underneath on this. So that's similar to a Rouse car as well with the cover, is it? Yeah, similar, yeah. Looks we, similar to one I made for Andy's car. Yeah, yeah, very similar. Let's see if we can get down and have a look. Yeah, you'll be able to see underneath. Get down. Go on, get on grass. Get rolling about. There you go, look. So there's pump for the diff cooler, twin fuel pumps and twin filters. What are they, 2044s are they? Yeah, that's the Swell pot for the fuel tank. And you can see rear beam dampers, bits and pieces of the bricks. Yeah. All genuine 500 bumpers and spoilers on this car. Even made the perspex for the window there. So we can put, you can drill an hole in there and put a feed pipe in to keep the cool air pointing at the driver. And I built this obviously as a replica of the Colin Bond original car in Australia. And a friend of mine over in Australia, he owns the original car and he knew Colin Bond. So he told Colin Bond I'd built the replica. So I sent over the ECU cover and he got Colin Bond to sign that for me, which was a nice touch. And Colin said he was impressed with the car, thought it looked great. So is this the car you'd mentioned before that you fitted the fuel fills after it had been painted? Yeah, I did. Now, that was a, either a stupid thing to do or a brave, I don't know. But I thought, worst case scenario, if I cocked it up, I'd only have to paint that bit of white. But I spent a lot of time marking it out, put about 300 quids worth of masking tape on there, got a brand new hole cutter, because I knew I only had one attempt at it, and luckily we did a, a real neat job, and then obviously when we'd cut the hole, we just touched it up on the inside edge with primer, let it dry, then we touched it up with paint, but then I put that nice little rubber seal around it, just to finish it off, and put brand new ATL fillers in it, so we managed to do it without painting any any work on the car at all which was a, a bit of a bonus me being yorkshire and tight and not wanting to spend any money painting it so there we are i took a bit of influence for this car from various cars as well like i always liked the rouse recesses in the wings you know for the pulls so i put them in so this is pretty much you've picked various bits from other cars that you've seen over the years yeah yeah and, uh, yeah, it's exactly that. Together. Just things that I liked. I, I pinched from here, there and everywhere um, to make it how I wanted it, really. And then sold it like an idiot. <laughs> there you go. So that's this car, and I'm sure most of you will have seen it before. So they are uprights as well. Uh, top yeah, mounts, are yeah, they? Yeah, everything's ours. So again, you had them on the shelf? Yeah, we had them on the shelf. It's, as I say, it's full, proper group aspect, front to back, everything's... The, the, the stuff we supply basically the only thing this has got it's got the steel rear beam in it um but i'm sure i can convince peter that owns it now to update it at some point and put all the egg and burger rear end in it so obviously you've got to earn it before you can spend it as i say so we have a quick look at this one as well yep so last car on the stand today is this one that you might have seen in some of the videos i think adam smith maybe did a video on this one at some point um, but this is basically a car that Paul sold and he didn't sell it far away because it went to his nephew. Uh, my niece's boyfriend. Niece's boyfriend, that's the one. Adam. And, uh, so yes, it's Adam's car. And he hasn't had it very long, maybe six months. Yeah, something like that. So yeah, he's yeah. brought it along basically to put on, on our stand and this is a good example of a road car. A bit of tidying up to do here and there, but overall it's pretty good. Yeah, it's a good car. He's going to do bits and pieces to it. He wants a little bit of paint and... But he's, you know, it's a project for him. Adam bought a three-door off us as well, a real big spec 
modified three door always wanted a 500 uh, this came up which was a, a fairly reasonably priced car really because he wanted a bit of work so he bought that off us and he's um he hadn't done out with it apart from polishing and cleaning it he's done belts tensioners and everything on it to make it run right but he's going to do a bit under bonnet and a few bits and pieces here there and everywhere but because he was local we asked him to bring it along today just to put it on stand as a so we had really a, a car that we in build one that we built and then obviously we do the road cars as well so that was it so yeah that's basically rounds about a week i think i think so yeah we're here again tomorrow aren't we Saturday yep. today we're here again tomorrow and there's a lot more cars due here tomorrow but it was uh, nice to be asked to come along wasn't it yeah it was yeah um, you know, i suppose it, most people watch bangers and cash and uh, we're quite lucky out we? we know the family personally yeah. I've known Dave and Paul most of my life, really, I suppose, and they asked us to come along, so... Yeah, we haven't had the weather, but we've met some new people, Yeah, seen some interesting cars, and yeah. shown other people what Steve we Steve got all moist over a 6R4, <laughs> so he's been dribbling for about two hours <laughs> two, this afternoon. Two, not just one, though, two. Yeah, there was two here, yes, we had to disappear at one point behind bushes. <laughs> Don't know what he went for, but he came back sweating. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's been a good day, so... I say we're in again tomorrow, yeah. so if there's out exciting we see tomorrow, we'll maybe do a bit of video in on that. Yeah. So we're still here at Matthewson's at the Bangers and Cash show. I thought we'd have a quick look around and see what else is on the showground. Uh, we've seen this earlier already, this is one of Paul's favourites, is this? So. I've got all giddy with myself <laughs> over this. So if anybody's thinking... got one, genuine Cooper S, white with a black roof, twin fuel tanks, Get in touch. I, I think this is mint. I think this is the only other car that ain't got an RS badge on it that I've seen Paul get excited about. I love it. It's great, isn't it? <laughs> well, they're just brilliant, aren't they? Yeah, they are, yeah. Just ticks every box for me, that. It's the it's, best colour. This must be one of them cars that you've seen when you were younger and thought, I want one of them. Well, my dad used to race minis. Right. That's what it is. And the old Cooper S, lad. You want a Cooper S? <laughs> And I mean, what will it be now? Not to six in about three and a half hours <laughs> yeah. with a tailwind yeah. downhill. Just great, though, isn't it? I know, before you all say it, would I get in it? I don't care, I'd just sit and look at it. Yeah. Just we'll, meant. We we'll had second living room with you. I know, <laughs> put it in my pocket. I love that. That's the car of the show for me, that. Yeah. Absolutely mint. So yeah, this is one of the ones that we'd seen. What was the other? An Aston Martin DB5, is it? That's your other all-time favourite car. Yeah, well, yeah. You say that, don't you? We all have about 10 all-time yeah, favourite. I don't mind that one there, to be fair. Yeah. That's nice. That's a Mini Cooper, not an S. So it says Cooper S on back. It does, yeah. It's got an S on the front yeah, as well. It maybe it's is not there. got the... Uh, Oh, it's been de seamed, hasn't it? Yeah. Which was a, I don't know if you know, a thing in minis years ago, they used to do what they call de seam them. So if you look at that one, you can see the, the seam down there. Well, it was trendy to get rid of them. That one there, they smooth it off, but you look at it now and it looks yeah. naff, doesn't it? People are trying to put them back in, yeah. Yeah, it looks naff. It's still nice, though. So we have a wander on. Yeah, let's go and see what else we can find. We're here with Nigel here, who's the owner of this car. And you've had it how long, Nigel? About 40 years. 40 well, years. So for 40 years. He's so. going to tell you a little bit about his history and what he's done and who drove it and what have you. Because I love it. I think it's great. And I'm sure you lads, even though our lads, Nigel, are into Cosworths. Oh, That's right. We yeah, do. well, I can, I can go with that. I'm yeah, but Carthus and Sass, we love everything, don't we? So tell us a little bit about it then, Nigel, the so, history. It was bought by a lady by the name of Jacqueline Purchase, who's in Taunton Motor Club in the 60s. Uh, the car started running in 67, as far as I'm aware, with the Lady Navigator as well. So your original girl power team. <laughs> Never mind the Spice Girls. Um, and it has done a number of international rallies. I say it beat Timo Mackinnon in the 68 uh, Tulip Rally. A lot of other people beat Timo Mackinnon as yeah. well, but at least this car did. Hey, he never yeah. done that, you know. Yeah, exactly. It's not like finishing second in a boxing match. No, is it? exactly. Um, 
and then it, it went on uh, the picture on the far side of the car you're looking at now that's of her and the works navigator in the Manx International in 1971 and they finished 22nd in that event which, which is, is brilliant isn't which it? is yeah. brilliant for a little, for a little mini yeah, yeah yeah for a yogurt pot with the lawnmower <laughs> engine and that's a pretty damn good uh, result isn't it well i think that's the thing now is you lease cars the cooper minis the cooper s isn't that for, for a small car with a small engine they did phenomenally well in all forms of racing it's, it's a really design it was a very good concept there was certain as an engineer and certain things oh god why did you do that but at least i mean on the original minutes the fuel tank was supposed to be in front of the driver uh, yeah. on the original Sigonis design well, it's the worst place to put a fuel tank over a hot exhaust pipe. I mean, it, it's like playing with fireworks and electricity at the same time. Isn't so it? you'll know, because so, you know more than me, the twin fuel tanks, that was only the Cooper S's, wasn't it? It was only the later Cooper S's. They were an option up until 65, 66, and somebody will know the answer. They only had a single tank. Not all Cooper S's are twin tanks. No. There's a Cooper S over there with a the single tank as well. But obviously, if you're rallying, you need to be able to get fuel in either side, you need to carry more fuel. Uh, the two are connected. I mean, on this we have two fuel pumps, so if something went wrong, we could switch the switch and go, like you do on any other rally car. Um, so anyway, Jacqueline stopped rallying uh, be the, possibly the middle of the 70s. A friend of mine happened to be going down to get married in the area, stayed with her, found the car in a shed where it was nearer to being a, a chicken shed than it was a rally car, <laughs> acquired the car, came back, as I say, sadly Peter put a sunroof in it, but I've now re-roofed it and sorted all that out. Um, and Peter sold it to me a long, long time ago, and it, I ran it for a while, just as a road car, and then uh, took it off the road, started taking it apart, and it sat there for 20 years really? as a shell. Uh, I then finally got some money uh, and I paid somebody to uh, repair the shell. Now I could have bought a new shell for 5,500 at the time. The work on this shell came to over 10,000. But I thought you wanted the original shell. I wanted shell. the original shell. I don't want a reshell car because it's Murphy's brush. New body shell, new gearbox, new engine, yeah. new suspension. Well, what have we what got left? It? Not even the speedo, you know. And, uh, so. Uh, you have to bite the bullet and replace some yeah, bits. Yeah, yeah. Stuff that's going right, you take off. But it, it is all replacement parts. So we did that. Uh, I had a friend sort that out. I had another friend who's very good in Mini Coopers, uh, Colin Jalland, up in near where I live. At, uh, he prepares uh, motocross bikes. He prepares them as well. He did the engine. And then the guy's name on the side, Richard Johnson, who's a retired engineer, he put it all together for me. And Rich is, is a perfectionist, he's a very, very talented guy, nicest guy you could wish to meet. And he's put this together and the number of the cars yeah, since yeah. for me. But Richard's put his uh, heart and soul into this and really, really done me proud on this yeah, car. And it's, I really, Jacqueline has never seen the car since I've had it done. It's actually only really been on the road. It went back to the Isle of Man a few weeks ago and had a hammer around the Isle oh, of Man, uh, which was great. It went over on a Jaguar weekend and Richard said, not one Jaguar came by me, we were going so fast. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's great, she's lovely, isn't she? All the period lights it's an, and Yeah, that with the back. original lights. I mean, what we have done, we, it's gone from 970 to 1275. We've given it plus 20, so we're at 1293 now. Really, yeah. um, but we also put an LSD in it, we put a safe oh, yeah. box in it. So it's a bit of a competition. Does it make more noise at the back end or more noise at the front end from the exhaust pipe or the straight cut yeah. box? But, uh, but it's, I love, I tell you what I do, like all the, the period twin well, stop watches. Right. Yeah, and yeah. Well, the, I mean, they are Smiths. If you want the original tag stop watches, oh, they're 1,500 yeah, quid a piece. Yeah, yeah, big A money. terror trip like that is silly money. Yeah. Absolutely silly money. Well, it looks great, ones, doesn't it? It looks but it's, great. I've tried to keep it as period as possible and put it back to as it was when uh, Jacqueline was rallying it. And I, I really want her to come up here and see this car. I mean, I've got a number of other things that she wants to go with, but uh, we will start off with this one. Yeah. And I just hope she say, she goes back to her happy childhood yeah, I'm sure she will, I'm sure you know, she will. It's a, and it's a piece of nostalgia, I mean. Yeah. There are people of a certain interest or a certain age that are interested. And, I'll tell you what, it's like me. I mean, obviously, I, I, I'm 52. 
Yeah, the early days are well before my time. Oh, really. yeah, well, I'm 62, so yeah. I just remember them. Well, my dad used to race minis when, oh, you know, exactly. so I remember yeah. when I was a kid. Yeah. And mini cool presses was the the, the, the was, top of the it. tree. Yeah. Yeah. And then you had the a coupe, oh, you had a, you had a Cooper S, you could beat anybody. Yeah, so but, for uh, me, I like looking back at um, memories of my dad, who's passed away now. But right, oh, yeah, I love it. Well, thank you very much no for, for showing us around. No, 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 really I, appreciate. I'm glad you like the car. And yeah, I should lovely. You know, don't don't scrap them, save them. Yeah, save absolutely, them. Was, mate. Yeah, we've I've got had to keep three minis, right. and they all nearly ended up in the dustbin. Yeah. Yeah. Wouldn't it be a shame to turn that into oh, a can of beans? No, she looks <laughs> great. Credit to you. Thank you very, much. very much. Okay, cheers, cheers, buddy. Thank you. Let's have a quick look at this mini, uh, this uh, Capri then. Looks smart, doesn't it? Yeah, that's nice. 2.8 injection. Oh, it's one of the turbo ones. Is it? Yeah, 3 litre injection turbo, it says. Different, that, isn't it? Yeah. So it's a 2.8 injection special, isn't it, that's been bought out to 3 litre. Yeah. I don't mind an old Capri and all, I like Capris. I've always fancied a Brooklyn 280. In the green? Yeah, it's the only colour they do, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it's nice, that. Very tidy. Do you remember the... Was it a 2.8 Brooklyn's one that had the Cosworth engine in it before the fall one? Yeah, yeah, I know the guy who built that. Yeah, yeah he passed away a couple of years ago now. Yeah. Proper car, that. What else have we got? All the Mustangs. Mustangs look convertibles. Another, another thing Paul's into. Yeah, but I like them with a roof on, man. <laughs> I'm not, I haven't got any air to blow in the wind, have I? So was, I have to buy it. Was a that tatty roof. van park there, look. Yeah, proper van, that, look at that. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, plenty of stuff here today. That that was the um originally uh what is it car that wasn't it? Had a simulator in yeah, it. Simulator. It was in uh, was it Millennium Dome or something Millennium like that? Millennium Dome in, in two thousand that one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What else have we got? Let's have a quick look at this. So this is Adam. We haven't mentioned this actually. No, because this one here yesterday. This is Adam Green who owns the black five hundred on our stand. This is a modified three-door Cosy he bought before the 500. Beautiful car. This Got the 500 one. bumper on. This is one you sold him, was it? Yeah, it is, yeah. I sold him this and the 500. So I must be doing something right because he's bought more than one. <laughs> Don't miss the train. Look at that. We're having a go on that later, aren't we? Yeah. I'm going to see if we can steal it. <laughs> Let's have a look over here. Look, there's some cool stuff over here. Old Cavalier SRI 130. Is it a 130? No, it's not. An onion? <sighs> yeah, you can't beat a Ford onion, can you? Tidy old girl. Don't see many of them about now. No, you don't, do you? Cavalier's nice. So go on, then you'll have to tell me about this because I was never into the old Vox horse. Yeah, it's just SRI 130, they were a cool car. I'll tell you what, a lot of these were used for police shoes, base. Yeah. They all had SRIs. Yeah. Quick, quick car in the day and handled fairly well, I know, to yeah. be fair. Rare Back colour that one. In the background there, look. You don't see many in that colour. That Capri is nice, Great. being well restored. Look at that. All restoration pictures. See it there. Oh, that shoe was rough. It's had a lot of work done, hasn't it? Done a nice job though, aren't they? They have, yeah. Yeah, look at that. Proper. Panel gaps and that are lovely on it. Another nice thing. Nice is that. And then next to it, what's this Mark 1 XR2? That's the one that was on bangers in cash. There we are. 
Can't do that, innit? An odd BMW 2002. Quite a cool retro all car now. So there we have it. We have auction going live, auction going on now. First one they've had in years. So that'll be Derek up there doing his thing, is it? Derek's holding the stuff up and Dave's doing the auctioning. Zoom in a bit on that. We had a good chat with Dave last night, didn't we, for about three yeah, quarters of an hour? Yeah. Yeah, it's been a good weekend, hasn't it, so far? It has, yeah. Stop that. So there we have it. That's pretty much the end of our weekend. You can see a big variety of all different types of cars. Old stuff, new stuff. There's even a Focus RS, a Mark III that's joined the end of our stand. Somebody just dumped it on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's been a good weekend, hasn't it? Yeah, yeah. nice to see people. Yeah. We hope you like the bit of different content we've tried to add into this one. Just a bit of different to look at from the boring old Cosmos all the time. And, uh, we're back to workshop stuff next week. Yeah, so thanks again for watching. Hope you enjoy it and we'll catch you on the next one.